In this video, I'll show how to do at-home fecal egg counts for goats and sheep. A fecal egg count involves taking a sample of your animal's poop, mushing it up in a saltwater solution, and then looking at it under a microscope to count how many parasite eggs are in the sample. This count gives you a rough idea of your animal's overall parasite load so you can treat accordingly. You can get all the supplies you need for fecal tests, including a microscope, for about $120. If you can find a used microscope, you could probably cut this cost in half. Alternatively, you can send samples to a lab for about $20 a test, but if you have multiple animals and want to test multiple times a year, you can quickly see how the investment in doing at-home tests pays off in the long run. Before we begin, note that all the details I'll cover in this video are available via a PDF guide, which you could find a link for in the description below. Included with this guide is a printable worksheet you can use to record and calculate the results of your tests. Jumping in, let's talk about supplies. Of course, you're gonna need a microscope. I got this one on Amazon for $70. There are three features you'll want in your microscope. First, it should be binocular, meaning it has two eyepieces to look into. A monocular microscope can be used, but they can cause a lot of eye strain after even just a few minutes of using them. Another feature you want is a mechanical stage, which has dials you use to move the slide around when viewing. This makes navigating the slide more precise than trying to move it by hand. Finally, the microscope should have magnification ranges from 40x to 100x or greater. In addition to the microscope, you should also purchase a microscope slide called the McMaster Method Slide. The slide has two chambers you put your sample in, with a grid printed on each chamber that is used to count the eggs. Other supplies you'll need include a scale that can measure in fine increments, a dosage syringe, a fine mesh strainer, some Epsom salt, a half cup is used to make a solution you'll use to prepare your samples. You'll need some disposable cups to prepare your sample in and something to mix your samples with. And of course you'll need some poop. Um, ideally you'll collect straight from the source before the pellets hit the ground to minimize dirt and other debris from contaminating your sample. Uh, if you can't get to testing right away, you can store your samples in the fridge for a few days if needed. With your supplies gathered, your first step is to make a salt water solution with your Epsom salt. To make the solution, mix a half cup of Epsom salt in 16 ounces of warm tap water. After mixing, let the solution sit overnight. The next day, you want to look for some grains of salt at the bottom of the container. Uh, if you see this, you know your water is fully saturated and you have enough salt. If you don't see grains of salt, add some more Epsom salt and repeat the mixing soaking process. Next, to prepare your first sample, measure out about two grams of fecal pellets and add 28 milliliters of the Epsom solution using the dosage syringe. Mix this well, breaking up the pellets as best you can. When you're done mixing, let it sit for five minutes to soak. After five minutes, give it another good mix and run it through the strainer. Using the dosage syringe, inject some of the sample into the two chambers of the McMaster slide. And immediately place the slide on the microscope and let it sit there for another five minutes. During this time, the parasite eggs will float to the top of the saltwater solution within the slide chambers. After waiting five minutes, it's time to study your sample. To begin, set your microscope up with the 10x eyepieces and rotate to the 4x objective lens. Looking through your scope, move the stage around and locate the blue lines of the slide as a starting point. Use the focus dials on your microscope to bring these lines into focus. Note that everything you're seeing is inverted, so the direction you move the stage is the opposite of what you're seeing. For a more detailed view, you can switch to the 10x objective lens and refocus on your sample. Now that you're comfortable looking at and focusing on your slide, let's talk about how to identify parasite eggs. First, note that the majority of what you're going to see is plant debris, which will be irregularly shaped and brownish yellowish in color. You will also see air bubbles. These appear as well-defined circles with thick gray edges. In terms of eggs, you're primarily looking for strongulids, with the most prominent being the homunculus, or barber pole worm. These parasites cause the majority of issues in our goats and sheep. 
Strongulid eggs are oval in shape with a distinct outer layer or shell. Within the shell, you'll see a smaller cluster of circles. All strongulid eggs will be similar in size. If you're seeing things of a lot of different sizes, it's probably not an egg. Another egg you might want to be on the lookout for is coccidia, which can cause issues in young goats with symptoms of diarrhea. Coccidia eggs are about one third the size of strongulids and have a more defined outer shell. They kind of look like hard boiled eggs cut in half. You may also see tapeworm eggs that are square or triangular and contain a small round embryo. But like I said, strongulids are the eggs we're most concerned about, so that's what we'll be counting. Now that you're practiced in identifying strongulids, you can count them. Do your count by scanning through each column of each chamber, tallying the eggs on your worksheet as you go. If you use the 4x objective lens when counting, you'll be able to see the full width of each column, but the eggs will be small, so only do this once you're comfortable identifying them. Until then, you can use the 10x objective for a more detailed view. You'll just have to move the stage around more to scan the full width of each column. Finally, one issue I'll note about my microscope and the McMaster slide is I'm unable to move the stage far enough to see the very top of the columns. This isn't a huge deal though, as it's just a very small portion of the slide. To demonstrate what we've learned so far, let's go through an example slide identifying and tallying eggs as we go. See if you can spot the strongulids before they're marked on the screen. And that completes our count of chamber one. Adding everything up, we identified 17 eggs total. And now our next step would be to move over to chamber two and repeat the process. Once you have a final count across both chambers, plug the totals into the formula on your worksheet to calculate your EPG or eggs per gram. To help decide whether your animal's EPG is high enough to warrant treatment, here are some suggested thresholds. Note though that fecal egg counts should not be the only factor to consider when deciding whether to give your goat a deworming medication. You should also do regular Famicha anemia tests, which involves looking at the color of your animal's lower eyelids, which should be a shade of dark pink. Light pink to white indicates anemia and is often an indication of a concerning parasite load. Finally, you should consider the overall condition of your goat, noting their energy level, general health, etc. Factoring these three points together can help inform whether to deworm. For example, if you have a goat with a somewhat high fecal egg count, but their Famicha score is good and they appear otherwise healthy, you may decide not to deworm. On the flip side, if you have a goat with a somewhat low fecal egg count, but their Famicha score is troubling and they appear lethargic, in this instance, it would be advisable to deworm. To wrap things up, I want to leave you with a few concluding tips. Tip one is to keep records and study your data over time. 
you will see fluctuations depending on the season, as well as the resistance levels of different animals. Tip number two is after giving an animal deworming medication, run another fecal egg count 14 days later to confirm the medication was effective in reducing their parasite load. Tip number three is just a note about being cautious about deworming more than necessary because parasites can develop resistance to deworming medications, reducing their efficacy over time. And then finally, tip number four is to always do your own research and consult your veterinarian when interpreting fecal egg count results and deciding on a treatment plan that works best for your animals. And with that, I'll conclude this video. If you found this information helpful, I hope you'll check out the downloadable PDF linked in the description below. It includes all the instructions covered in this video, as well as some worksheets to help with the testing process.